Hello friends. Well, my name is Sunil Ranjan and I am an English teacher. Now, in this session I am going to explain the poem A Plant by A.K. Ramanujan. Now, first telling you about A.K. Ramanujan. Atti Pet Krishna Swami Ramanujan, popularly known as A.K. Ramanujan, was born on 16th March 1929 in Mysore, India. He was an Indian poet and scholar of Indian literature who wrote in both English and Kannada and his poetry is known for its thematic and formal engagement with modernist transnationalism he argued strongly for giving local non-standard dialects their due though he wrote widely in a number of genres his writings stand out as wonderful works of striking originality and sophistication. In 1976, the government of India awarded him the Padma Shri. As an Indo-American writer, he had the experience of the native as well as foreign land. His poems such as The Conventions of Despair reflected his views on the cultures and conventions of the East and West. A.K. Ramanujan died in Chicago in America on 13 July 1993. The collected poems of A.K. Ramanujan received the Sahitya Academy Award by the Government of India in 1995. Well, friends, now coming to the poem with the explanations. Now, I begin the poem. A multifoliate restlessness is held by a rude simple inversion, fed by its own mirror image, outlining under the opaque earth its skyward antlered pride. Now the explanation. As the poem begins, through a plant metaphorically, the poet expresses the restlessness and the inner tension that has resulted from the loss of one's roots forming not the real image of oneself, but the one seen in the mirror. The image of the person remains the same, but it is not the real person of flesh and bone, but a reflected one, just a two-dimensional figure. The real person with three-dimensional human form and identity is missing. There is pride in one's achievement. But because of the sharp points often pricking, that pride is painful and makes one restless. There is a deep sense of loss expressed through a plant with leaves, but the real and straight roots that lie deep somewhere far away in the earth. Through these lines, the poet expresses his deep longing for his birthplace, from where he came far away to a foreign land to fulfill his cherished desire to earn name and fame. After achieving all that he once desired, he begins to feel restless. He says that such high sense of achievement and recognition is false pride that often hurts. Now moving further, there are stings for the edge of the braid on the jagged leaves, rib and vein, picked out in a calcium white on a sea green base, plump fingered stems washed all over in a milk diluted green. Now the explanation. Moving further, the poet speaks about a plant that has sharp edges with stings. Its sea green leaves have sharp points and on them are solid white ribs and vein running. Its stems are light green and feel fleshy when touched with fingers. And of course, the poet here is talking about the plant cactus. Now, moving further. Break it, where you please, a glow-lit blood wells up in a turgid convex bead on the wound, a butterfly yellow summer flower on its head. Too hot for woman's hair or honey hive, its stem and bud a carnal red in the flower cups hollow, insinuating a growing sensual motive. Now the explanation. The poet says further that one can break the plant anywhere as one pleases. When broken, a shining red liquid flows on its 
rounded beat it is the wound that it gets when it is assaulted by someone on its head is a bright yellow summer flower which is too hot to be used by a woman in her hair or a honey hive its reproductive and appealing red bud in the flower cups hollow implies a growing sexual desire thus the poet looks at a plant from so many different angles now moving further soon this motif sheds its guise of petal and swells through silk and sepal into caterpillar pods that crack their torn calyx to seed october heat with a rattle of mustard specks each a black and simple son of that deep dyed charistus now the explanation soon such a growing sexual desire changes its appearance of petal and shifts to silk and sepal and finally to the caterpillar pods these caterpillar pods crack their torn outer part to nourish the october heat with the ringing of a little black unpleasantly bright mustard the poet here refers to so many stages a plant undergoes and what all he thinks when he is speaking about a plant now moving further in an inch of dry bone sand these ugly firstlings gather their ancestral fantasy flesh and burst their bellies in scorpion travail precisely timed to throw a rash of caterpillar cacti now the explanation in these lines the poet offers two powerful images of caterpillar and cacti which express the poet's deep sense of pain and loneliness like a caterpillar that feeds on dry plants and develops into a butterfly or moth the poet too is presently feeding on a dry foreign land where there is no such greenery and liveliness as he used to have in his native land back in india he is waiting for the conversion of the caterpillar into a beautiful butterfly that sips honey from the blooming flowers the other image is cacti the fleshy plants that have no leaves they have spikes on their body and they grow in deserts the american life of the poet in chicago is like these fleshy plants rooted in a desert with no leaves of happiness The image shows the deep and intense longing of the poet to become a flower with beauty and fragrance. He feels as if he is moving like a scorpion, anyhow passing its time with no color and charm of life. Now, moving further, upon the sun, tropic and striped, they grow and claw the naked heat of a southern sky. agitating for the skinny ducks of june they rant like a mob of tiger moth cubs lying to treacherous earth's ironic law that holds by the root of a plant now the explanation in this final section of the poem the poet speaks of america the land where he is living the country has stripes on its national flag The poet stretches his imagination and says that the caterpillars too have stripes on their body. He lives in America, a foreign land far away from his hometown in South India. Like the young ones of tiger moths moving in the month of June, he too in his fleshy human frame is living anyhow in a land which has no charm, energy and color of life. often the poet feels the foreign land very dry he says that the earth has its own strange laws that the roots of any plant continue to stay where they are no matter its stem and flowers branch out in different directions in the same manner the poet too feels deeply rooted to his native land where he was born the familiar fragrance of his soil continues to haunt him and he expresses his feelings of anguish in his poem so here i come to the end of the text with its explanation and my dear friends if you have subscribed to my channel so nice of you 
If you haven't subscribed and if you choose to subscribe, I promise that I'll be coming up with fine videos for you from time to time. Thank you.